Mark Morris has brought his acclaimed dance group and music ensemble from New York to perform at the Sydney Opera House. And here's a little of what you can expect. Mark Morris will also be running classes and workshops, including one for people with Parkinson's disease and their carers, which he's been doing for a number of years now. And he joins us now from Sydney. Mark Morris, great to have you on News Breakfast. Good morning. Morning. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to have you here to talk uh, modern dance. We've had such a, a, a grim news morning, if you like, uh, so many serious topics. And what's always been lovely about the work that you do and the nature of your ensemble is that you insist on live music performance. Why is that so important to you? For the same reason that live dancers are important to me. I mean, for <laughs> me, uh, I, I take all my dances from music and that used to be the way things went. In yeah. fact, it used to just be called music and not live music. So for me, I would no sooner tour without musicians than I would without dancers. So for me, it's a complete experience. I want everybody live, including the audience. <laughs> Most importantly, the audience. Um, tell me about the creative, mm -hmm. the creative process for you, though, when you're marking out a, a new dance. Is, is music in lockstep? I don't want to ask you the dreaded question about, you know, which comes first, but, but how do they work in together in the, the creative process of actually marking out uh, what a new dance might be for you? Well, I, I choose music that I love and can bear to listen to and study for a very long time because, of course, by the time you see a dance, I've been working on it for a long time and yeah. listening. And So, uh, in fact, in rehearsal even, we, I always use live music. I, all the classes, all the rehearsals, all performances have live music. So when I'm making up a piece in the studio with my wonderful dancers, I choreograph it as we work it out so there's no there's sort of no other version than the one that happens with between the musicians and the dancers and I make all the decisions but it happens very spontaneously and intuitively and with a great deal of preparation and work as someone who who works in the field of contemporary dance of modern dance and is one of its leading exponents mm -hmm. does the does the grammar the language of, of of contemporary dance need to be reinvestigated from time to time do do you find that in order to keep yourself engaged you need to keep challenging what that what that grammar if you like of, of modern dance is well as far as i'm concerned dance is dance whether it's classical ballet or contemporary or modern or whatever or uh, a street dance, social dance, um, it's people communicating with one another physically. So really, like any language changes over time, I just do my best not to make up the exact same dance twice in a row. So <laughs> if I do that, that keeps me going. It's been working for a number of years, so it's kind of working, I guess. It's been working for a long time. You've, you've had your, your dance group since 1980. And, uh, you I know. know. It's, it, that's a, a really long time. How, your, your personnel changes must have been substantial over those years, I guess. Well, um, yes, it's also a very good job to have. So my dancers last some, a lot of them last 15 or 20 years, about last. They dance wonderfully with my company for that long. <laughs> no, I know and what you mean by last. a lot of people last. keep working with me. Yeah, exactly. I've endured. So it's been very gradual. If you haven't seen the company, last time we were in Sydney was about 11 years ago. Mm. And so some of the people have changed, but if you're me, it happens so incrementally that it seems an organic thing. Um, but... Yeah, people stay for a long time. It's a very good job to have, and uh, people are devoted and intelligent and wonderful artists. So, tell me about the, the, the dance for Parkinson's disease that they, I think you've incorporated into your company for quite some time now, and there'll be um, uh, one such event also as part of your Sydney Opera House performance. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a, it's a very very interesting program that was developed uh, about a dozen years ago with two dancers from my company and the Brooklyn Parkinson's group, my building, my studios are in Brooklyn, New mm. York. And they, th through working with people who had Parkinson's, came up with a, a syllabus and a, a way to get people to move, to dance, and to sing based on the repertory of my company. But it's very, very much not scrutinized. It's not a clinical study. It's not... Uh, 
uh, a miracle cure. It's just a fabulous way to get people with Parkinson's sort of unlocked and socialized and staying active with each other. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing that's sweeping the world. So it's, we're giving a class to Parkinson's people and also participating in training so that the Parkinson's program that we started uh, is, can be uh, perpetuated. And there's, it's happening here in Sydney and everywhere. So it must be a, 